Good afternoon, everybody. I'm, uh, my name is Dorn Shalvey. I'm a system engineer with the National Library of Medicine. And today I'll be talking about some of our uh, considerations in migrating our repositories, specifically uh, our, um, our efforts to look towards Fedora 6 um, for our future repository needs. Uh, there are several colleagues from, from NLM here on the call with me. Thanks, thanks everybody for attending. In particular, um, Jennifer Gilbert, our project manager, she'll be also presenting tomorrow on one of our recent um, systems that just went live. And also in particular, thanks to um, Calvin Shu and Steve Liu on the call who did a lot of the, a lot of the grunt work in our uh, recent migration evaluations. Um, okay, so let me, uh, all right, so let me give a brief description of our repository. We're a, a longtime Fedora 3 user, um, probably uh, close to nine, nine years now, something like that. We have uh, many millions of objects, it's about 70 terabytes in size. Uh, there's a focus in our repository on the historical items. We are, um, we're supposed to preserve these items for the life of the Republic, meaning the, uh, uh, as long as the United States is around. Um, I guess no comment there. But uh, we have a lot of different types of items in our repository, still images, films, videos, lots of books. We have uh, digitiz digitization on site with uh, hardware that we purchased and integrated on site. We've recently started adding quite a lot of uh, archival materials, archival and mixed modern manuscripts, um, and also added a lot of born digital items. So uh, current, current publications, um, organizations, things like that, which, we, uh, which our librarians select and we uh, store in our repository and make available as well. We also have a lot of uh, citations, XML citations from the original index cat from National Library of Medicine going back uh, many decades from the um, early part of the uh, 20th century, as well as some court cases and uh, even uh, started storing some historical software as a, as a test case. Our current stack is it's the latest version of 3.8, uh, probably a lot of components here, many people recognize Solar G Search for indexing still, um, running MySQL on a CentOS uh, environment, all on site currently. We have a blacklight based front end um, and uh, we, we did recently add IIIF about a year or two back to our stack using Loris now. Uh, and then a bunch of different content specific viewers, Open Sea Dragon, um, Internet Archive Viewer, things like that. So we, uh, we use uh, several different technologies in our stack here. Uh, here's a few of them displayed. Uh, here's a rough, uh, I, I guess, cheeseburger style version to use, uh, to use the Islandora term earlier in the, uh, earlier in the day. Um, <clears throat> Fedora is still the center of everything here for us. Uh, lots of, oops, lots of items stored on our, uh, on our file system. We use NetApp, NetApp uh, for our file system needs, NetApp mirroring to other data centers. And as well, we started to store some items in the cloud for, for additional redundancy. So this is kind of what we have now. Um, so again, this is all in Fedora 3. So part of our challenge is, well, what do we do uh, in the future? For many of the reasons David mentioned earlier, uh, we have been looking at uh, Fedora 4, 5, and 6. And we, we did try to look at Fedora 4 and 5. And um, with our size and, and kind of richness in data modeling, difficulty in migrating to Fedora 4, we did try it out. I think it was the, um, the mode shape issue that several members experienced kind of also uh, nipped that one in the bud for us. But Fedora 6 uh, looks good for us so far. We are evaluating it. We are a Fedora 6 pilot partner. I think there's three organizations who are um, assisting with that effort, and one of them is us. And so what that means is we have been um, running migrations kind of early uh, as the team, as the Fedora team has developed and migrated the software. So I think uh, thanks to, I think it was Mike Durbin originally developed the current migration utilities out of Virginia, but I know that's gone through several iterations since then. So thanks to all those guys. And, and we've been testing that uh, for, um, since it was used originally for four and now for six in the OCFL world. Um, and so uh, our initial migration tests, um, 
thanks again, Calvin and Steve, for doing all this grunt work. I think it uh, looked pretty good. We, we did this back in February. We, um, we migrated our millions of objects over in, uh, took about seven days for one half or kind of top level objects, another, another five days for four million kind of XML citation objects. And we tried different uh, forms of migration. Uh, the migration tool gives you a, a few different flavors, or at least it used to. I'm not sure this is still the case um, in the the in the structure of your objects uh, in the OCFL target output directory. And there were some initial issues, um, which I think the Fedora team has long since resolved. Um, so I think that looks pretty good to us now. There are a lot of still a lot of file system and space issues with nine million objects. Lots of I know limit issues. This is kind of how many files you can represent at the file system level. So we, uh, at, at NLM, we are fortunate to have a fair amount of technical support in terms of sysadmins and things like that. Uh, they're not on our direct repository team, but we do uh, regularly work with them. And so we, we go back and forth and kind of do a lot of tuning. Uh, our current work and migration is, is focused on trying to deploy and evaluate a a Fedora 6 based stack that is in line with what we would realistically look to deploy in our architecture. So what that means is uh, if, you, if you grab Fedora 6 now, it, I think it's commonly deployed in Jetty with an internal database, embedded database. And so uh, for us at scale, we would look to probably deploy it within Tomcat or something like that. Uh, our teams have a lot of experience in that here. Um, as well as use MySQL, uh, which is what we use on site. Um, I think Fedora 6 is, has been tested most with the latest version of MySQL, which we're not, we're not running as a production environment. So that's been set up in a test environment. So we're kind of working on that now. And then we hope to kind of re, redo all of these migration tests and see how that works, uh, as well as start to do some, uh, some load tests and uh, functional tests, access and things like that. We have not yet run those, but we do plan to do so. So um, this is all kind of nice to get uh, going locally on-prem, uh, but we do have other uh, things in consideration at NLM, and the primary one among them is that we are, uh, it's now a, a general policy for NLM to deploy all of our applications in the cloud, at least all front-end facing applications. And, and so what that means for us is that the front-end portion of our repository uh, is going to be required to be in the cloud. Um, and so we're re we are evaluating what's the best way for us to do that. In particular, the interesting point for us is that we do do a lot of on-site digitization. And so we have the issue of moving files from on-site into the cloud. They're not gonna be born digital in the cloud. And so there's a lot of interesting questions on what is the best point to move that content into the cloud? Is it right after it's a uh, book is scanned, for example, shoot the files up and then process them into a Fedora in the cloud? or we could uh, have our, our uh, processing and object building logic on site and our Fedora on site, and then kind of move post-processing, move the, just kind of what the user would see out in the cloud. So there's a lot of interesting architectural choices there, which are still to be determined by us. <clears throat> um, likely it'll be a split somewhere in the middle, still to be determined. Um, most likely we'll use, uh, there's a lot of AWS here now, but it could be Google Cloud, could be GCP. Um, there probably will be a push to be as cloud agnostic as, as possible, which does come at a cost. So the, there may be a mix of Kubernetes and Docker uh, in our future to separate a lot of, a lot of these things um, bento box style. Um, <clears throat> Other items that, were, uh, that we kind of have to think about, and we started to think about a lot of this, but we haven't really kind of put the pedal to the metal, and so that's also upcoming for us. One is that we do do a lot of um, uh, external content, and so in the Fedora 3 environment, we've, we've stored essentially all of our big files, all of our binaries are of type E, some type R. Uh, if you remember Fedora 3 modeling, it's type external or redirect, but basically where Fedora manages the links but not the actual binaries themselves, and so uh, how we navigate that in a Fedora 6 OCFL world is also interesting. Uh, we could kind of leave these things there and have Fedora manage the links. We could uh, push, we could move all that to its own OCFL structure, separate from the Fedora 6 one, or, or put that in the Fedora 6 OCFL structure. Um, <clears throat> and that is still to be determined. That's probably one of our major 
design issues still to be determined. We haven't yet done the work in moving our metadata over to RDF. Uh, that still has to be done. Um, we we, we kind of were, another thing that tripped us up in Fedora, I think in the early Fedora four days was, uh, we do want to use our own URIs as, as subjects in um, when making assertions. And so I think that is possible now, last I heard. Um, there's some discussion in the Fedora tech talks on side loading into Fedora, meaning that uh, gee, maybe it's nice to kind of put your put your content into a Fedora uh, file system, but but and then after you do that, let Fedora uh, notify Fedora that it's there instead of going through Fedora's front door, so to speak. That's kind of how we've always done things in Fedora three, just for efficiency's sake. So we just place binaries on the file system instead of say um, shooting it up over HTTP. We do do a lot of clustering. Uh, another general design approach here is um, try to avoid single points of failure. And so the, what that means is we have uh, kind of two fedoras at each of two data centers, for example, two, uh, two black lights at each of two data centers and so on. And we've kind of done a lot of work on our own to make that happen under the hood so that the fedoras stay consistent. So that's a uh, clustering for availability, so to speak. And so how would we do that in Fedora 6? Uh, so that's also to be determined. Finally, um, we do plan on revisiting our original preservation requirements. Uh, and uh, it's been a few years since we did that to, in order to evaluate what's the best way to kind of meet that in uh, current, day, uh, current day systems and architecture. How much of that can we get out of Fedora? How much do we want to look at other tools or maybe roll our own? So these are kind of our larger scale issues that are still to be addressed. So. Um, in a nutshell, I think it's a, a very exciting time uh, for, for us and for the project. There's, there's a lot going on, a lot of balls in the air, but a, I think uh, over the next year or two, we will be kind of moving to uh, something that's probably fairly different from what we have now. Thanks, uh, here's a link to our, the, the public interface to our website. Um, and again, thanks to Jennifer, Calvin and Steve for their, uh, for their help with this, this presentation. Yeah, thank you very much indeed, uh, Doran. This is James Creel from Texas A&M. I'm a software developer here. And uh, I'm intrigued about the use of your own uh, minted URIs for your uh, RDF uh, assertions. Do you all maintain a local uh, name authority for entities you care about? and um, if so, if uh, entities are referred to in multiple places, say maybe in um, your local authority, but also controlled vocabularies elsewhere, how do you, um, you know, keep that in line and, and uh, you know, associate the two labels, shall, shall we say, for the entities? Yeah, I, I guess for, for this particular project, um, we don't use a specific name authority. Um, and, and so what we're really referring to here is, I guess, uh, is our definition of a permalink, meaning a, a link for, for resources that we want to attach some level of permanence that we agree to as an organization. Um, and so how, how do we handle that situation in terms of um, when Fedora occasionally tries to mint its own URIs uh, for things and then make assertions on those in an LDP world? So it's things like, um, I think we typically use resource.nlm.nh.gov is our domain name for these permalinks. And so we haven't really, I, I don't think we, uh, that's registered anywhere, although we are, we are kind of a partner in registering name authorities in general out of the um, uh, NAN effort. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so, okay. Um, so, I. Uh, for the most part, you're uh, dealing with uh, uh, URIs for uh, digital resources as opposed to um, outside entities like uh, people or places or things. Uh, okay, yeah, so I, I guess the, the context in which the issue is, in which I put that bullet here on the slide, is for resources and objects that we want to kind of have some level of permanence online. But certainly we do use, um, we do use name authorities uh as much as we can for resources people objects um 
I think LCNF, I don't know if there's any of our metadata library, maybe Jennifer could probably better answer that question if she's, uh, if she's online. I'm not sure if she's here right now. Yeah, I'm here. Um, so yeah, we do, we do all the authority control in our ILS, and then we, we export the metadata to, the, to Fedora. But we're not, we haven't added URIs to all of our subjects and names yet. But we, yeah, we use LCNAV, and then we also have our own mesh headings, which are already in RDF, actually. So part of the plan is to, in, to integrate all of that going forward. Does that answer your question? Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Thank okay. you so much. Uh, sure. If I can just ask one more follow-up, what's your ILS where you're able to um, keep those? Oh, okay. So right now we're using Voyager, and we've been using it for 20 years. So are we. Okay. We're just beginning um, a migration to Alma. So that's another <laughs> okay, okay. development, yes. So by next year, we should be on Alma. Jennifer, this is Diane, Diane Bohr, um, hey, Diane. Of cataloging um, and metadata management. I do want to point out that we do uh, create and maintain URIs for our subject headings, and they're freely downloadable, and you can, you can get them at our website. 